Hello and welcome to update video number four for the 250 pound battle bot that I'm designing. This is getting into the home stretch and today I'm going to be talking about the armoring of the horizontal clamp. Every week the geometry changes a little bit and this is what I have now. When the claw is this far open it'll be able to drive forward with a little bit of wheel scrub. And then here's what it looks like when the wheels on both halves are pointed in the same direction. Uh, when it's like this, it'll be able to grab some of the larger robots, and as you can see, the hinge point is pretty recessed. It'll be hard for weapons to access that, and uh, it's pretty well protected, especially compared to the original configuration I had. And here's what it looks like when the claw is fully closed. You can see it can close further than in the past, so there's been improvements made to the range of motion. The fully open position has also been improved, it's a little wider, so this is just for showboating or driving around the opponent. It will expose the center pivot point a lot though, so it's not for use against opponents with kinetic energy weapons. Moving on to the most obvious addition from this week, the front steel claws are made out of welded 1 4th inch thick AR400 steel, which is the same stuff that Overhaul uses, although Overhaul used 5 millimeters instead of 1 4th inch. But the idea is the same, to have an angled surface to deflect horizontal impacts upward, and there's nothing important behind these, so they can become punctured and the robot's still going to work fine. With no cutouts to reduce their weight, they are 75 pounds, and I actually have enough extra weight now that I made the scale of this thing slightly smaller that I could do the 75 pound claws. But I added some cutouts and I was able to get the weight down to uh, 60 to 65 depending on what the cutouts look like. With that extra weight I added three things. First is these one inch diameter rubber mounts that go between the frame rails and the claw. Second I added these inner panels. These are also 1 4th inch AR400 steel and they're also mounted on the rubber impact mounts. And third, some 1 4th inch plastic on the outside to prevent things from getting into the rotary walkers. Uh, I think this is HDPE, which is high density polyethylene, I believe. Whatever is the impact resistant stuff, that'll be what's on the outside. So assuming I got all the densities right, what you see here with the plastic panels is 245 pounds, not including the extra weight that welding will add and not including all of the hardware. Now welding and hardware will probably push it just over 250, but Swiss cheesing stuff is half the fun of building a combat robot. After doing the big heavyweight claws, I wanted to make something that saved a little weight so that if I wanted to add a tail weapon like I originally drew in my concept sketches, I had additional weight uh, to work with. So these things are 30 pounds, or they're like 32 pounds combined, so the uh, this saves around 30 pounds compared to the heavy steel claws. The metal that's close to the rotary walker is 3 8 inch aluminum, and the metal that is brownish, dark brownish color, that's the normal 4th inch uh, AR400 steel. The tip of this is spring loaded, so it can actually spring up and down, it should return to center. There are torsion springs in the uh, uh, in the mounts for that tip of the claw. You can see them here and these torsion springs should be able to return the tip of the claw to center after it gets hit up by a vertical spinning weapon. I figured this would help it survive some impacts instead of trying to absorb all the energy it would just kind of get deflected up and then spring back to its location. The inner panels would slide on the ground. They are welded to these one half inch steel cylinders that pivot within the aluminum block mount pieces. As you probably noticed, in almost every way this claw design is less robust than the big steel claw that I showed previously. But in some scenarios it could be useful to have an extra configuration. For example, if I was going against an opponent with a big uh, overhead hammer, this could allow for some additional weight to be added in terms of in top armor. And then I wouldn't really care too much that the, uh, that the front wedges couldn't really handle kinetic energy impacts. Or it could be paired with an awesome flamethrower tail or something and it could be the equivalent of Warhead's dinosaur head where it's not a really competitive configuration but it looks awesome on TV and it can be used against less competitive opponents. And then at the opposite end of the durability spectrum there's the Let's Survive Tombstone configuration which is the heaviest steel wedges with no rotary walkers. So at this point I have a kind of finished CAD at least for the configuration that doesn't have a tail. If I do do a tail, then I still have to figure out how that's going to work, what weapon that'll have, and how to get that within the weight limit. And uh, I think I'm going to try to make a little mock-up 
of like a one pound or three pound uh, ant or beetle weight to see how it works. So that'll be next. Not level.